Today I'm taking a look at Nitrix 1.2.1. It was built on top of Ubuntu and uses the Plasma 5 desktop with some in-house customizations which they have dubbed the NX desktop. However, this isn't a desktop environment as such. Nitrix doesn't come installed with apt or a conventional package manager that most of us have grown accustomed to. Instead, it opts to distribute all software packages using the app image format. The way you install Nitrix also differs from a traditional Linux distribution. With Nitrix you deploy your operating system using ZNX. For this video I've deployed Nitrix to a USB drive, which is also portable between machines. With that out of the way let's take a look around. Hello, so we're now at our Nitrix desktop, it's just been deployed to a Samsung T3 SSD. Um, I'm not too sure what the speeds we'll be getting off of this SSD are, I get about 500-ish when I'm using it just for sort of media and things like that. But let's give it a go and put it through its paces, so we're going to download some app images and see how they go. So it comes installed with a few out of the box. Let's have a look. So you've got Dolphin for your file manager, console, LibreOffice, Waterfox replaces Firefox here, Pix, not all of the icons are showing just yet. Um, comes with the KD apps, Arc, Latte Doc at the bottom, which you can change its look and feel and position on the screen. I've not really played around with Latte Doc too much, so I'll probably dig in with that another day and see how we go. It's quite nice on the defaults there though. Um, so we've got VLC there, QT apps and utilities. So it comes with V-Metal which is their sort of pass through for Windows. So you could sort of instead of a dual boot, if you had two graphics cards for example, you could pass through one, do you believe, and then you could play your games, your Windows games kind of natively. Um, and then you've got the ZNX GUI as well if you wanted to redeploy some more. I don't know if you need to point to an image or if it just uses the host image from the device it's install deploying from I'm not too sure actually um, I've only used the terminal ZNX to deploy it so far from a Debian desktop and then I deployed it onto this and now we're running it from this laptop and you can use this same device that it's been deployed to between devices it does work and it lets you choose which graphics drivers I do believe you want at boot as well so AMD on the video so that's pretty cool. So let's, has it got a software store? No. Okay, and I do believe you update using ZNX as well. So if you were to go into ZNX and then go to update, I haven't tried this one yet. So click OK, go to device, and then you choose the device. I'm not going to do that yet because I'm not too sure what device we're even running on. But that's how you would update. So we'll just leave that as that. Oh, it wants to do it. Let's just cancel that as well. Okay, so as well as app images, it will let you use Homebrew, kind of like what you'd use on a Mac to install things. So let's try and install Vim. Does it have Vim? No, so let's try and install Vim with Homebrew. So we'll go brew install Vim. Right, so it's downloading and installing Homebrew first, and then we'll um, be able to install Vim, HTOP, MC, and a few other sort of terminal programs. There we go, it's just going through it all now. So let's jump onto the Waterfox web browser and download a few app images and see how we go while it's doing that. Okay. So, Waterfox, this is based on Firefox, two versions, one was chose from. Um, I've not really used Waterfox much, so I can't say too much on it. Did I install Vim, or does it still need to be installed? No. Okay, so let's go back up. That should be no problem now. There we go, so that's installing Vim for us. Right, let's download Caden Live, because I do believe they have an official app image available to download on their website. Uh, where are we? Download. App image. I mean, it's quite cool that Caden Live does that. I've not noticed many other good programs like this that do have their own official app image. So let's go for the 19.08.2 app image here. And we'll just save that. And while that's downloading, let's see how our 
Vim installations going, so that's still going. It's, a little, it's quite a process using Homebrew. Um, I'd much rather just use apt install. So they've removed apt completely, so you can't use apt whatsoever. There you go, apt command not found. Um, so this is based on Ubuntu, um, but they're trying to sort of move away from apt and package managers as such and just exclusively use app images. Right, that's still going. Let's see how we're getting along here. No. So the Windows, um, sort of the V metal thing, I don't really have a computer I can really test this on with two graphics cards. Maybe I can look into that and see if we can do a video on that at some point down the line because that would be interesting. So it just sort of does all of the hard work for you and sets up a pass through out of the box. Okay, so I think that's now installed here, um, downloaded, sorry. Not that there's much difference with an app image because as you say, you don't install them in the conventional way. So it's all in the one image there and it will sort of mount it. So let's go into home and we'll copy it, um, cut it into applications there. That way it will be picked up in the applications menu properly. Um, so it should be Caden Live. There we go. So, oh, it's disappeared. Let's try that again. Right, let's open up Caden Live and see how that looks. There we go. Caden Live. That's all very. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. So I must say, it's a very nice looking distribution here, and I do like the fact you've got a global menu up here out of the box. I do love a global menu. So how are we going with this? See, this is taking far too long, really. This is the only thing. Come on, Vim. Right, let's look at the theming and icons that it comes with. So let's go to settings, system settings. So global theme is currently on Breeze, I do believe. Oh, discards. I don't know if it's done anything there. It can't be on Breeze. Surely it's on Nitrix, isn't it? Let's have a look. Yeah, sorry, I was wrong. It's on Nitrix Dark. That's why I wanted to change it, because we accidentally touched Breeze. Nitrix Dark on there as well. So it's a nice little theme, Nitrix Dark. Application style. It'll be this. Yep, Nitrix Dark. Brilliant. So the icons are... Where's the icons? The icons it comes with is called Love. Not used this icon pack before. I don't know if they make it themselves or not, but it's quite a nice little icon pack. Right, are we still going here? This is taking far, far too long. Okay. Let's grab a couple more app images. So I'm just going to download a Firefox app image instead of using Waterfox all the time. So let's go to the app image hub. And then hopefully here we'll be able to grab a Firefox image. There we go, straight away. So let's just go to download. And we'll download the app image here. Download. Cool. So what's going on here? Um, I do believe it's moved on to something else, is it? What was the last thing it was doing? Um, I don't know what's going on. Oh, here we go. We've got some movement. So it's finally now installing Vim. So the actual installing of Vim should be nice and quick. I might have spoke too soon. Oh, it's running brew clean up because it's not been done for... Fun. There we go. So now Vim. Let's try. Let's go into documents. And let's go Vim new.sh. Um... There we go, so Vim's working all nice and proper. Let's also install a few others. So we go brew, install, we'll get htop. Um, oh, and we do MC as well. So let's go to htop. So here we go. Let's have a. Oh, can barely see it. So we're using 1.77 out of 15 CPU sort of utilizations at pretty low. So that, excuse me. So CPU utilization is pretty low, so that's all well and good. So let's just close this and then this. Oh, let's also install MC and TMUX. Sorry, right? 
because I'm going to keep this installation going on this external hard drive. It doesn't hurt just to sacrifice an external hard drive for this little distribution to see what it can really do. Um, Steam. So, as far as I'm aware, you can't really install Steam with an app image. Um, so, I've, if you had, if you used the V Metal, you could have the Windows version. Um, how would you install Steam on here? So it's got DPKG, I do believe. Let's have a look. Um, have we got NeoFetch? No. Let's have a look. Let's install NeoFetch a second. Just have a look at something. It's the lazy way of doing it. Um, so let's go into the keyboard shortcuts and have a look at what the shortcuts are for switching desktops, etc., workspaces, um, global shortcuts, maybe. Kwin. I really don't use KDE a lot at all. Maximize. Switched one desktop up. So what would what would that be? Is the default left or right or up or down on a? Let's try switch one desktop to the left. Let's just do something easy for that. Yeah, I don't really care. And let's go switch desktop to the right. Let's do the same one. Yep, don't really care. So right, it's not doing anything. We're not switching any desktops. Why is that? Let's try if it's maybe up or down. Switch to window above. Oh, that's window. We want workspace, don't we? That's the problem. Um, you can tell I don't use KDE. Is it a workspace? Desktop? Plasma, accessibility, activity manager. There we go. See, I'm looking like a right sausage right now. Um, let's try some of the other shortcuts. Uh, standard shortcuts. What's all this for? Switch. I have no idea. Homebrew's still going though, isn't it? Um, shh, just go into system settings and see if the keyboard shortcuts on here are any different devices or something. Hardware, keyboard, input devices. There's not any shortcuts on here, is it? Tell you what, let's uh, let's Google it. We haven't got a clue, have we? Open K menu, select system settings, keyboard and mouse, choose K win, change the switch one desktop to the left. This is what we was on. Let's try that again then. Okay. Virtual desktops. Right, so let's add another desktop. Maybe that's why it wasn't working. So can we do it now? There we go. It was just because I needed to add the desktop, so he was having a bit of a moment there, but we got there in the end. <laughs> okay. Right. So it's all sort of, I mean, it's, I mean, the animation feels quite slow, but I'm sure that's what it's supposed to be. What's going on at the dock? Oh, so it sort of isolates the programs for each desktop. That's okay. Okay, brilliant. Cool. So we've got that going. Has Brew and in finished installing? Let's have a look. Where's Brew? Cool. So brew's now done. There you go. So you got MC working as you'd expect. And let's just also install. Oh, oh my God. One second there. Let's also install Tmux. So there we go. We should be able to play around with the terminal how I do on most distributions now. They're sort of my essentials. Tmux and MC and a few other things, HDOP. So let's change this desktop wallpaper and see what it looks like. Configure desktop. Uh, 
Let's go for landscape. Yeah, not too bad. Quite minimal. I like it. So, what can we do with these panels? Can we do anything in particular? It's the same old sort of... Oh, so it uses the actual latte dock for the panel. Okay. Alright, so I'm not being able to switch desktops again. What's happened there? Ah, oh, yeah, you go. You can change the animations. Desktop cube. Let's have a look at that. No, it's not doing it now. Let's try. Let's change the shortcut. Maybe it's something to do with that. So where's K Win? K Win switch. Let's just make this a bit bigger. All right, let's reassign that one, and then we'll do the same for that. Oh, all right. yep, and then we'll apply. There you go. And now look at that. <laughs> oh dear, it reminds me of sort of old school effects when you used to play around with Ubuntu. There you go. So we got. A a cube effect. Um, it's not really for me, but I'm sure someone out there will enjoy that. <laughs> okay, um, what I'm going to quickly do is just reboot it now and see what it's using at idle in terms of memory and RAM. Um, so let's just quickly open terminal and reboot it like that. Oh, Sustom, what are you doing, boy? Right. Um, let's do a quick reboot. Um, I'm going to have to tell my laptop what to boot into. I just have to hold down F12 and select the boot manager. Okay, UEFI OS Samsung Portable. Um, it'll come back up on the screen in a moment. It's just got to pick up the input. Nitrix 1.2.1. Any minute now. There we go. I think it's uh, picking us up. I wonder if it's going to go straight into the live user, actually. I've not done if I've disabled that or if you can. Um, I haven't disabled the welcome screen either. So that's probably going to make another appearance. What have we got here? Can I get size? Okay. Is it going to go straight into the live user with the welcome screen? Yes, it is. Right, let's just skip all of this and open up HDOP. Finish. Um, what user is this? Is this my user? Or is this the live user? This must be the live user. So let's log out. Yep, live user session. So we'll have to work out how we disable that. Um, also, I don't like the fact that it keeps the same applications open, so we'll, um, there's probably a setting that we can sort that out as well. So I'm going to assume it's going to start where we left off. Yeah, we need to disable this. Yeah, so it's... Oh, we got a crash. I'm going to skip this. Finish. So we'll disable that. Right. Let's open up a terminal. HDOP. Oh, I can't even see what that says. Um, let's try and change the colours, maybe it's something to do with that. Let's try that. Eh? Oh, not a load of nonsense. Right, so it's using 720 megabytes at boot, um, so it's got 1,491 DPKG packages and 89 brew packages, so I'm sure you can still install deb packages some way using sudo DPK, DPKG, I'm going to assume. But that's my look at Nitrix. It was a bit longer than I expected, but it's a nice little distribution. It looks nice. Um, 
I think it, it's probably in my top five of nicest looking distributions. I'm just not quite sold yet on the app image format to sort of replace everything. But I'm going to keep this install uh, deployed onto this external hard drive and maybe do a few more videos on it as time goes on. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and I shall see you on the next one.